Sally regards to guests and visitors to Nemata. This is the main professor recording under the shift of Tantra Mother. There's a power that is of a cosmic nature that permeates the entire universe. And this power, which can be given a name in Sanskrit and a name in Greek, does not have a name in English. But the result of this power, the result of its capacity to confer selfhood, can be expressed in a phrase. And that phrase is, the beauteous form of the self. So what produces the beauteous form of the self? Well, it's a power that is universally present everywhere that anything exists. And it is the same power at every level of existence. And it is called, in the Tantric cosmology and metaphysics of Asia, Mahamaya. Mahamaya. Now, Maha means great, and Maya means not illusion, but apparition. An apparition is not an illusion. An illusion is an error. An illusion is a mistake. It is seeing something that is not there or seeing what is there wrongly. For instance, it is an illusion of the human animal to see the planet Earth as dead matter, to see it as inert, to see material as inert is an illusion. It is not an apparition. The apparition is to see any material at all. You see the difference? So never mistake apparition, maya, with illusion. Mahamaya is the great apparition. And what is the great apparition? Well, it is the beauteous form of the self. And Mahamaya is the power that produces the apparition of yourself. You have a sense of being a self, and so does the mother planet. And both of those senses of self have the same source. Can you get your mind around that? And so it is completely wrong metaphysically and in any extension of human syntax and conceptualization in psychology and metapsychology. It is totally wrong say that the self is an illusion. The self is no illusion. Oh no. The beauteous form of the self is a product of the love and abundance of the universe itself. The universe beyond self produces the beauteous form of the self and that is your subjective awareness of who you are and Gaia's of who she is. Now let me elaborate on this a little further. The beautiful form of the self in Sanskrit, Mahamaya. The frame of infinite beholding that causes a experience to appear to be viewed by an individual witness, be it an amoeba, an elephant, or a human person. Did you catch that? The frame of infinite beholding that causes experience to appear to be viewed by an individual witness. You see, you don't merely perceive the world subjectively like an individual witness, that is to say, a subjective self looking at the world because you have a body. 
It's not your body that gives you the sense of being a self. It's Mahamaya. It's not the material body of the earth that gives the Aeon Sophia her self-consciousness either. It's the same power, Mahamaya, or in Greek, Otogenes. And the Otogenes emanates directly from the originator. In Hindu Tantra, Mahashakti is the term for the inscrutable power of Shri to generate the manifest worlds in full-blown materiality, concrete and sensorial. So there is something called Shri or Shri Shiva. That would be the originator, okay? Literally, Shri Shiva means blessed, pure beholding. So the originator doesn't do anything but behold, although its beholding is the cosmic act of love. The originator beholds, and it delegates to a power that emanates from itself called Maya Shakti. It delegates to that power the generation of actual manifest material worlds. It doesn't produce illusions. It's no more interested in sitting back and looking at illusions and errors and phantoms of perception than you are. It wants to experience worlds that are real, with real creatures in them. And so, the originator, the ground awareness of the entire universe, operates through its Shakti, or female part, to generate these manifest worlds, which are material emanations and material appearances. The planet Earth is a material appearance generated by the Aeon Sophia, but the fact that she can generate it is due to having the power of Mahashakti as an Aeon, and the power of Mahashakti comes from the originator, you see? So there's a delegation of powers. What I'm saying now is as simple as it gets, and I dare say as it will ever get when it comes to anything approaching a metaphysical syntax. Additional to the inscrutable power of Mahashakti, by which material apparitions can be produced, there is a second power. And Hindu Tantra describes this second power of the originator as Mahamaya. And that is the power of the Shakti or feminine aspect of the originator to generate the form of the self, thus making discrete experience possible in those material worlds, one self at a time, one view at a time. Even though there is really no single experience in any of those worlds, but there is only the presence of the pure beholding of the originator itself. But if the originator was confined and restricted to be in its own pure beholding, which is undivided, it would be instantly bored. So it would much rather experience its own pure beholding in an infinite faceting of selves, which are frames of beholding. It prefers to look at itself through a frame, or a lens, or an aperture. But in order to observe itself in that way, it delegates part of its own power to generate that aperture, that lens. And that is called the beauteous form of the self. It is beauteous. The immensity of it is planted in you and it builds.